friends, it's Kwaila. Thanks for joining me this Tuesday on 7 edition. I'm Shafi Karzali and these are tonight's top stories. Millions in Chinese community in Malaysia and around the world welcome the year of the pig. Still no takers for the equanimity. Government spends hundreds of thousands of dollars for monthly maintenance. And fire in upscale Paris apartment building kills at least 10. Good evening. A remarkable spirit of togetherness was displayed at the Chinese New Year Open House organized by the Kuala Lumpur and Slango Chinese Assembly Hall, KLSCAH, near Kampung Atap today. The gathering saw ordinary Malaysians mingling around with national and state leaders, including the Deputy Prime Minister, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Azizawan Ismail, as well as members of the business community. Clad in a pink abaya dress, Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza was greeted on arrival by KLSCAH President Dato Ong Seng Kek, as well as an energetic lion dance performance. She, who is also Women and Family Development Minister, was joined by Defence Minister Mohamed Sabu and Primary Industries Minister Theresa Kok. In a show of Chinese New Year togetherness, MCA President and Aihitam MP Datuk Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong also joined in the merriment. At the event, the Deputy Premier with Datuk Ong were invited to write the Chinese calligraphy for Ji Ziang, which means auspicious. She then joined the KLSCAH committee members to do the traditional tossing of the Yi Sang, symbolizing abundance, prosperity, and vigor. The Pandan MP, who spent more than half an hour at the event, also had a meet and greet session with more than 200 guests. After attending the Chinese New Year open house, Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza stressed that any decision on changes to the cabinet was the prerogative of the Prime Minister. Huh? Dr. Sri Dr. Wan Aziza was asked to comment on a blog post yesterday claiming that Economic Affairs Minister Dr. Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali would be appointed Deputy Prime Minister after the Chinese New Year. The Finance Minister today expressed confidence that 2019 is the best start to see the country's economic development. Lim Guan Eng said his confidence was based on the strengthening of the country's fiscal position, as well as a steady increase in foreign direct investment FDI since last year. Speaking to the media in Penang today, the Finance Minister said after last year, the country is able to give confidence to foreign investors as well as financial fund companies that the government is committed to addressing the problems inherited by the previous government. Pada masa yang sama, kita committed untuk mencapai sasaran kita dan ketara kita telah capai sasaran dan itulah Sebabnya tahun ini adalah permulaan uh, untuk melihat pembangunan ekonomi uh, dan kita harap bahawa itu pelabur tempatan boleh memainkan peranan untuk terus melabur dalam pasaran tempatan. Earlier, Liam attended the Chinese New Year Open House organised by the Penang Chief uh, Penang Chinese Chamber of Commerce at the Spice Arena Indoor Stadium in Bayan Baru. The function was also attended by Penang Yang Dipertua Negeri Tun Abdul Rahman Abbas, Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Saifuddin Nasution Ismail and Deputy Foreign Minister Datuk Marzuki Yahya. For the young, the tradition of annual reunion, oranges, ang paus and lion dance is still being kept alive. 
For Canning Assembly woman, 30-year-old Jenny Choi Si Jen, Chinese New Year is all about spending quality time with loved ones. However, since the festivity runs for 15 days until the Chap Go May, the young may have their own activities. In the first day, um, like us just now, uh, we can low sang together. Maybe after this, we go uh, Pai Nian. Uh, after this, maybe we can go some movie, um, chit chat with my friend, go and yam cha. This is our, uh, the young people tradition. And tossing the yi sang or the prosperity toss is a time for getting together. And no matter how big the generation gap, every generation, past or present, has something good to bring to the table. On the second and third days of the new year, families visit relatives. Discussions often focus on young people who talk about their work, housing and relationship status. For the young and the old, the fortnight of festivities will continue to reunite families with the exchange of gifts and ang pao's. Meanwhile, Chinese communities around the country welcomed the Year of the Pig today, ushering in the Lunar New Year with prayers, family feasts and shopping sprees after embarking on the world's largest annual migration. In Sabah, the state government held its first ever Chinese New Year open house in Kota Kinabalu with over 5,000 visitors of various races and ethnicities turning up at the event. Visitors started flooding the Hakka Hall since 9am, where guests were treated to a sumptuous feast of local delicacies. The event kicked off with the tossing of Yi Sang, a salad symbolising abundance, prosperity and vigour, followed by a lineup of cultural performances, including the Lion Dance. Also present were Yang Dipertua Negeri Sabah, Tun Juha Mahirudin, Chief Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdal and his deputy Datuk Christina Liu. In Sarawak, Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg was among the first dignitaries who attended the Sarawak United People's Party as UPP's open house in Kuching today. The Chief Minister was accompanied by his wife, Datin Patinggi Jumaani Tunku Haji Bujang. The open house was attended by about 3,000 people, including Sarawak Yang Dipertua Negeri Tun Abdul Taib Mahmud and wife Toh Puan Ragad Kurdi Taib. Meanwhile, the Kuantan Fisheries and Trawlers Associations in Pahang held a Chinese New Year open house for a group of old folks and underprivileged children. Smiles of joy were seen on the faces of 23 children from the Rafa Children's Home in Aipute and six residents of the Jabo Old Folks' Home at the event held in Taman Chandrawasi, Perdana. Some 150 guests were also present at the event, which also featured a dragon dance performance as well as a variety of scrumptious local delicacies. In Kota Baru, Kelantan, a well-known restaurant, Kopitiam Kita, in Taman Desa Jaya, welcomed the Lunar New Year by serving free food to some 10,000 customers. Its manager, Stanley Wong Seng Tiong, said this was the ninth year that free food was made available to the outlet patrons as well as visitors. Despite being held moderately, Chinese New Year celebrations in the largely Muslim-populated state were nevertheless in cheerful spirit. A very nice celebration there. Moving on, brokers for the sale of the One Malaysia Development Berhad 1MDB linked super yacht Equanimity are reportedly facing a hard time in securing a buyer for the luxury vessel. The sale, however, is not expected to come soon enough for the government, which is currently spending as much as 500,000 US dollars a month maintaining the super yacht. The equanimity was put up for sale at the end of last year with a guide price of 130 million US dollars or about half its estimated cost. Despite the huge discount, initial efforts to sell the vessel in a November 2018 auction after the Admiralty Court ruled that the government and 1MDB were the rightful owners of the vessel did not pan out. A lawyer representing 1MDB and the government, Sitpa Salvaratnam, said some bidders were opportunistic in their pricing but stressed that her party would not accept anything below $100 million. 
Report said some potential buyers accustomed to sizing up super yachts along Europe's southern coastlines have been unwilling to travel to the naval base near Kuala Lumpur that hosts equanimity. Yacht specialist Burgess, the sole broker for the sale, said there were few boats equal in size currently on the market, but the 92-metre equanimity remains unsold. Burgess is still talking to as many as 20 interested buyers for the vessel, with interests coming from the Middle East, Russia and other parts of Asia. The yacht's culture. former owner, fugitive businessman Lo Teik Cho or Joe Lo, has been described Meeting as a central person, figure in the multi-billion dollar scandal. Trust. Joe Lo and others are accused by authorities of siphoning 1MDB funds for personal use, including buying the equanimity, which was completed in 2014 and is thought to have cost $250 million. It boasts a gym, pool, a gallery, beauty salon and helipad, not to mention space for sleeping 22 guests. In Perak, police detain a man for possessing a knuckle duster during Ops Bersabadu in Batu Gajah last night. Police said the 20-year-old man claimed that he was unaware that it was an offence to carry the knuckle duster and he said it was only for self-defence. The operation was carried out at three locations along Jalan Ipoh Lumut and Jalan Pusing Batu Gajah. Apart from a knuckle duster, police also seized the man's sling bag. Mengikut kata suspek tadi, tujuan dia bawa benda ini adalah untuk keselamatan diri dia. Tapi walaupun bagaimanapun, pihak jenayah api di Batukaja telah pun tahan untuk sesuatu lanjut. Tujuan dia membawa benda tersebut dalam perjalanan dia untuk balik ke rumah pada malam ini. Seven men who tested positive for shabu were also detained while 114 summonses were issued. The case is being investigated under Corrosive Explosive Substances and Offensive Weapons Act. Selangor recorded the highest number of dengue cases nationwide from January 1st until February 3rd. According to the Health Ministry's Crisis Preparedness and Response Centre, 9,210 cases were reported in Selangor, followed by Johor, Kuala Lumpur and Penang, with more than 1,000 cases, while Sabah recorded 543 and Perak 422. At the same time, 20 dengue-related deaths were reported from January 1st until Jan January 26. According to media reports last month, dengue cases in Malacca increased by 118 percent, or 24 cases, in the first week of the year, compared with the same period last year. The health ministry has been advising the people and local authorities to use other methods to prevent dengue fever as an additional measure. More after the break, the true meaning of prosperity highlighted in viral video. Details next. Thanks for staying, staying with the 7 edition. In Sabah, a 23-year-old man died after the car he was driving crashed into a tree at the roundabout near the Likas Mosque in Kota Kinabalu earlier today. In the 2 a.m. accident, Andy Mahaga Sipawi died on the spot after he was pinned to his car. District Police Chief ACP Habibi Majinji said the victim, who was driving a protoniswara, was heading to Jalan University Malaya Sabah, UMS, from Kota Kinabalu. Upon arrival at the location, the victim was believed to have lost control of his car, which, was then, which then skidded before hitting a tree. The case is being probed under the Road Transport Act for causing death by reckless or dangerous driving. The Prime Minister's wife, Tun Dr. Siti Hasma Mama Ali, spent time to visit Economic Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali yesterday, who was admitted to hospital and underwent a surgery. This was shared by Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin's daughter, Farah Amira, in her Twitter account. Also included in the tweet was a picture and video of Tun Dr. Siti Hasma, accompanied by Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin's 
wife, Datin Sri Shamsida Taharin. However, in the tweet, there was no information about the type of surgery and where the minister is receiving treatment. But Farah Amira said that her father just cannot wait to get back to work. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin himself took to Twitter to express his gratitude and appreciation to all who had visited him. Members of the public are advised against bringing home dogs from other areas into Mukim Taiping and Bukit Gantang in conjunction with the Chinese New Year holidays. This is to avoid the risk of rabies infection. In a statement today, Perak Veterinary Services Department, JPV Director Dr. Ahmad Shahri Hassan said the Larut Matang and Salama districts have been gazetted as rabies-infected areas on January 14th and that the order stands until today. The statement read that all parties should continue taking precautionary measures, not bring out dogs from the gazetted areas, namely Mukim Taiping and Bukit Gantang, which have been declared as rabies outbreak areas, adding that if there is a necessity to take the dogs out, a written permission from the Perak Veterinary, Veterinary Services Department Director must be obtained to prevent spreading the disease. Dr. Ahmad Shafi also said that the department, in collaboration with the police, has intensified roadblocks and patrols to prevent transfer attempts of dogs out of the rabies-infected areas. Any person caught breaking the rule is liable to a fine not exceeding 5,000 ringgit or imprisonment not exceeding three months or both, as provided under Section 39, Subsection 1, under the, under the Animals Act 1953. Now, it's time for our daily segment, Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. What makes celebrations truly prosperous is not the lavish gifts or monetary wealth, but our loved ones, those we go home to. Besides the annually anticipated prosperity burger, this year, McDonald's decided to take things one step further by releasing a Chinese New Year video on Thursday about the, through, about the true meaning of, of prosperity which garnered a staggering 1.6 million views. Wow. Titled, Wish You Are My wow. Prosperity, the video touchingly highlights Wish how it's so easy for us to get caught up in the superficial things that we think the Chinese New Year is about. The video describes how often we forget that CNY is only complete when you spend it with your loved ones. And being able to spend time with them is the true reason why we go through all the effort to travel home every year. Towards the end of the video, it tells that the best way to show our family how much we care is through the time spent together and not through material goods. The video ends with a message on the true meaning of prosperity and abundance of love, joy and happiness. On this prosperous day, we generally see people joyously celebrating the Lunar New Year, but sadly it isn't a privilege for some to even see to it. On January 26, Singapore Speaker of Parliament Tan Chuan Jin wrote on his Facebook page about a man known as Mr. L found sleeping in the staircase landing. Unfortunately, in, the, in this tale, there is no happy ending. Here's the story. L was spotted sleeping in the staircase landing, partly because it was cooler there and because of a hoarding problem he had, he faced difficulty entering his house. According to Tan, L also refused to check himself into the hospital, despite him suffering from cancer. Tan clarifies in the post that his refusal is not due to financial instability, but more due to a certain sense of pride and dignity. After countless tries to convince L, they had to succumb to the fact that the only thing left to do is respect the choices that someone has made, regardless of how strongly we wish for another outcome. Sadly, Mr. L did not make it to the new year. Yesterday morning, Mr. L was admitted to the hospital and died on the same day. Well, if there's one lesson we could learn from this tragic story, even though we cannot possibly help everyone, there is still a need to try. Now, updated as of 7pm, here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today.